perhaps targeting this neuroimmune interface may actually function in some ways as a broader itch anesthetic, so to speak. And this is why uh, there was a lot of interest in this condition, paragonodularis, which is a primarily neurogenic itch condition, meaning that itch is the inciting event. And then due to scratching secondarily, we develop nodules, very these very dome-shaped hyperkeratotic nodules and papules. What we do know now is that there are inflammatory mechanisms that lead to itch. So in other words, if you have an inflammatory rash as an atopic dermatitis, you'll get itch. But there, as I've already hinted at, there are primary neurogenic causes where you start with itch and then secondarily, you can get inflammation. And this is why we put paragonodularis more in the middle of the spectrum. So how is atopic dermatitis different from paragonodularis? Well, the way we think about this at the microscopic level is that in atopic dermatitis, you have inflammation and you have a host of inflammatory cytokines that can directly stimulate the nerve and this causes itch. In slight contrast, in paragonodularis, what we think is that you actually have itch that evokes scratching, and the scratching in the skin can actually trigger a lot of inflammation secondarily. So it really starts with the nerve. It's where it starts. This leads to the production of cytokines that can stimulate the nerve. But we also speculate that this kind of stimulation can also result in the release of neuropeptides. This is a bit controversial, but this is a unique possibility in, in paragonodularis as well. So how are atopic dermatitis and paragonodularis uh, related? Uh, there are some similarities and there are differences. So we think the inflama inflammatory axes I've been talking about, type 2 inflammation, are at the center, are shared, irregardless of the cause. The inflammatory axis is very much shared between these two conditions. Symptoms such as burning, stinging, and itch are very much shared. But there are some differences as well. Patients with atopic dermatitis have the atopic triad more typically. Uh, they will have associations with asthma, food allergy, tends to occur in childhood. Uh, immunosuppressants tend to be more effective in atopic dermatitis. And there's actually better adaptation in atopic dermatitis because these individuals have had the disease for a long time from childhood. In contrast, in PN, there are actually a lot of other comorbidities such as chronic kidney disease and diabetes tends to occur in older adults. The use of immunosuppressants is less uh, ro robustly predictable. These individuals are less well adapted because they tend to develop this disease uh, slightly later in life. So uh, what we think is that, that we know a lot about the immunology of different disease states throughout the field of dermatology. There are immune axes that drive certain conditions that, for instance, alopecia areata or vitiligo, and there are other immune axes that drive conditions like psoriasis, but it's really this type two axis that drives a whole host of conditions, including atopic dermatitis and paragonodularis, and the neuronal profile tends to be much more associated with itch.